boat projects, the timeline of boat projects, when you see somebody else's, is it an inspiration or just a mind-blowing fantasy? Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today, we're talking about boat projects. Of course, isn't that the topic pretty much most of the time? Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Rainman Watermakers and SeaTask. Rainman Watermakers are capable of producing up to 37 gallons of fresh, clean drinking water per hour from seawater. Portable and installed models are available, all with off-the-shelf parts. Configurations are available in AC, 12-volt DC, and even a gasoline system, with new 2019 models being smaller, lighter, and quieter than ever. SeaTask is the premier U.S. facility for Rainman Watermakers. Visit them at www.seataskgroup.com to learn more. That's S-E-A-T-A-S-K-G-R-O-U-P dot com. When we bought Calypso in 1992, she was pretty much a shell inside, which was great. It was one of the things we really, really liked about her was that we didn't feel that we had to rip out all kinds of really beautifully done cabinetry and work to be able to make it just the way we wanted to. So back then, before the internet, we looked around and we bought books. And we had books to help us with all of our projects and get ideas from. And one of the books that we had was called Upgrading the Cruising Sailboat by a, an incredible author named Dan Spur. It, it blew my mind because I had the chance to meet him in person at the Annapolis Boat Show this past fall. And it was all I could do not to swoon because he's been in my head talking to me about projects since the early 1990s. Anyway, this book called Upgrading the Cruising Sailboat has all kinds of very practical ideas and tips on how to make your boat be more practical and more usable for you. And one of the things he talks about in there, because all of his writing and all of the things that he shares are from hard-earned personal practical experience. But he talks about this major refit project that he undertook on his own boat, which was a 28-foot Pearson Triton. So not that different in size than ours. Tritons are a little bit narrower than the Bristol Channel Cutters, but still the same sort of era and the same sort of size that we're talking about. In the book, he talks about the amount of time that he allocated and the project list. And I'm just going to read directly from the book. He says... I allocated six weeks to complete the modifications I had planned. My tentative list looked like this. Convert V-berths to one double berth. Install sink and mirror in place of hanging locker. Install through hell head in place of porta potty. Rip out old side loading icebox and install new top loading icebox. Install a table that won't block access throughout the cabin. Replace companionway stairs to create more galley space. Build in bookshelves and storage space for food and miscellaneous gear. Recover all cushions. Replace curtains and rods. Locate stoves for easier cooking at anchor and underway. At the end of the six weeks, all these jobs had been completed, including new bottom paint and topside paint, a wind vane, and a few smaller jobs on the rig. I worked on weekends and after work on weekdays. There's more, of course in his book about what he did. And there's a little more even in that paragraph talking about it. But my response as I read this, particularly now, as I think about our project list, which doesn't look all that different. Let's see, rip out V berths and put in a double pilot berth, uh, rip out the old galley and rip out the old chart table and install new galley and chart table area. Reconfigure the table so that we have better access in the cabin. We're thinking about redoing the companionway stairs so that there's actually maybe a little less galley space, but more usable galley space. We're going to get all the cushions done. And we are going, the other big thing we have to do is install an electric windlass. There's no way it would be six weeks. We're all, we similarly are working on weekends and after work on weekdays. 
there are two of us, which means that Jeremy can do work. He can have me running errands. He can have me grabbing the tool or holding the screw or holding the vacuum cleaner. But six weeks? My questions are absolutely numerous. Are, are you sure, Dan, that this is not a typo? Did you mean six months and not six weeks? Because even six months, that seems pretty fast for all the work that you're doing here. Question two, did you have some wild variety of helpers helping you who were all strong and small and flexible and able to get in every little corner and carrying lots of tools with them? Practical matter, were you living on the boat at the same time? Because if you were living on the boat at the same time, that makes it even harder because then you have to clean up to be able to sleep and cook and live. I'd really like to know how you organized your projects. And I'd extra like to know, how did you deal with the inevitable project creep? Like when you ripped out the old side-loading icebox, did you... How, how much old fiberglass did you have to grind away? Did you find, as we have, that there were bungs in places that were inaccessible and unfindable, meaning that you had to do a lot more damage than you initially thought you would? Where did you store your tools? What tools did you use? Did you have access to workshop space? I kind of also want to know what your finish level was like. And this is a personal question mostly because it's something that we've talked about. We can make this project go pretty quickly, but we have to spend some time figuring out what the finish level is that we're going to be happy with. And are there things that we can do to take shortcuts on making it look pretty? Because that's one of the things that we want is a boat that we love to look at and live in. So were you looking for utilitarian or did you have some secret way of finishing things off quickly to make it look good that you can share as a secret? Do you have any really good before, during, and after photos that show the process? You have some photos in the book that show the before and the after. I'd like to see the during. That's the part nobody ever sees. What did it look like? Are we nuts that we're doing this and what ours looks like right now? I'd love to see some of those. And how close is the nearest hardware store? Because when you were doing this project, you didn't have Amazon. You didn't have one or two day delivery. And so thinking about what you needed wasn't, and, and then finding it wasn't always a matter of, looking online exactly for what you needed, ordering it and having it show up the next day. And here's the other thing I want to know, Dan Spur, can you please come help us knock out the project list on Calypso? Because if you could do all that on Adriana in six weeks, how fast can you work magic on Calypso in a similar timeline? I'll bribe you with homemade pizza. So, Really, dear listeners, as you're hearing this, I would love to know what you think our timeline might be. We're saying it's going to take as long as it's going to take. When people ask when we're leaving, we'll say when the boat is done enough, which I heard from a reader not too long ago, and I really like that response. We're going to go when the boat is done enough, because the done, boat isn't ever done, right? We've got to have it done enough. So how long do you think it's going to take us to do our work? If Dan Spur could do all of that in six weeks, how long do you think it's going to take us? Hmm. Let's see. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We take inspiration from our listeners and what questions they have. And we hope, too, that you enjoy spending time with us on the podcast. If you liked what you've heard, please be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. And we'll look forward to seeing you out there sharing an anchorage sometime. Bye.